Are you ready to meet some pretty interesting people? I know I am, because this is day four of 10 days off, so be prepared to wobble. You are an animal on stage, woman. Thanks. If that's a compliment in some way. It's definitely a compliment. Are you always like that or only yeah, when you really, really in, enjoy it in again? Zoo, race in a zoo. And you're so flexible. No, I have I have a lot of operations. You wanna see some scars? Snowboarding, hip operation. I had an operation on my back and performed at our first release party with the stitches. So And still you dance? I don't know. I think I'm just I don't know, my, the, the doctor actually said to me, you got your, your like, discs from Lidl or, or Aldi, do you know what I mean? Like, really cheap German supermarket, basically. Your German band, you're definitely not German. No. You, I don't know, you're a bit French, you're a bit German. No, I'm from Tel Aviv, originally. Oh. We've been living in Berlin for like 10 years. Okay. Yeah. And that's where Ellen Aline discovered you? Because you're, you're on the label? on B-Pitch Control. How did that happen? So it's a small scene. She's seen us play a lot and uh, always been in contact with her and uh, talks to us almost every album. And this time we met and it's nice to be there. We've always been on German Berlin Indie, so we kind of fit there. It's nice to go like two roads from your house on your bicycle, talk to them, not like just email with people and fly somewhere to have a meeting. It's just more natural, you know. People also say to us like, oh, isn't it strange, it's a techno label and you're on there. I say, well, in 2002 and three, she was releasing stuff from like little remixes by Moshi Pet or Knife Hand Chop. These are like freaks, noise artists from um, Tiger Beat 6. It's not just techno. There's always been an experimental edge to the label. So in a way, um, I think we also fit on there with Berlin, homegrown Berlin talent, if you want. Don't admit it. Don't admit it. When was the last time you guys played in a museum? Oh, Friday. You knew that, you knew that. Hello. Research, research. Is that what you did? Yeah, we played at the Guggenheim Museum in Venice on Friday. So we're kind of used to playing in like club environments and also like actually really nerdy kind of culture things. And I, we enjoy it. We enjoy like changing the setting and stuff. Taking you to that dance to that barefoot movement. As a girl, I love clothes and stuff. Could you please show us what you're wearing? I'm particularly intrigued by the forks in your ears. So we're in Africa and I found, found some dude who makes funny jewelry, which is not easy to find because a lot of people who sell jewelry in Africa or African stuff, it's not actually made in Africa, it's made in China. And I managed to find a dude who made funny shit. Star styling, they're freaks from Berlin, just did something on the fashion show. Yeah, they make like, hello, who puts straw on a belt? You see anyone put straw on a belt? And then unfortunately I have some very corporate shoes on. I'm sorry for the corporate effect there. Your back looks very ominous. Powerful, very voodoo Actually, almost. I've become very powerful. I used to be a really skinny, like arseless, titless kind of skinny girl, and now I've become very, in my womanhood, I'm developing into some sumo wrestler. Did love have every, anything to do with that? Love? No, age. Age, honey, age. Okay, first of all, I need to know where your name comes from. My name is Jack Wobb. Uh, my last name is Jacob, and the sound on the bass is Wobb. That's where it comes from. <laughs> so you Wobb a lot? I Wobb. I could, I'm so Wobb a lot. Yeah, yeah. My style, what I play is reggae, dub reggae, and dubstep. And what was the other part of the question? Is that what you listen to as no, well no, in the car? No, no, no. I listen to absolutely anything and everything. I don't definitely don't listen to what just what I play. Um, if, if I was to go through everything that I listen to, I think we'd be here for hours, so it's fine. I listen to anything that's good, that's what I say. And are you ever tempted to play something that people don't necessarily book you for? Uh, <laughs> I have been tempted to, yeah. I'll drop a Will Smith track every now and again and like some funk, definitely, yeah, yeah. But Will Smith wobbles. Yeah, yeah, he does, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess he does. <laughs> anything with a bit of um, shuffle and a bit of movement to it, I'll play, definitely, yeah. Since you're on in about five minutes, uh, yeah. let's keep it short and snappy. What would be the one highlight of 2010 up till now? 2010 would be 
the first time going to Glastonbury and being able to say I, I got there through being an artist like I'd never been before and I got to play this year which was amazing. What was the one thing in your career that just kind of made it happen, that made your whole, the whole success stories shift? The moment I got a booking agent things became more real and I started travelling and seeing kind of physically being a part of the, the scene, kind of getting involved and yeah, meeting people. You're on in 30 seconds. On can 30 we seconds. can we have a quick twirl, please? A twirl. A quick twirl. 20 seconds and counting. Go! You do your sad step shuffle and Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. It's going to be cool. Are you nervous? I'm not. I'm excited. I don't really get nervous. I just get kind of like... I just want to get on there. That's what I want to do. <laughs>